This marriage with Leta nearly finished Mimkulu. She goes and has sex with a Nigerian man. What we now call a Jolofina. In your right? marriage? In our marriage. I'm telling you about something that happened year before last. She went and slept with this man in a toilet of a nightclub. Let her assaulted me three times before I defended myself the fourth time. Um, the first thing I noticed when you walked in here is how beautifully you dressed. Mm -hmm. uh, you seem to be a person who really takes care of yourself. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's intentional. Uh, maybe it's how you were raised at home. Just take mm -hmm. me through. Um, why do you believe in taking care of yourself? Um, you've just hit it, you know, <laughs> the nail on the coffin. Yeah. Because... I was actually raised by my grandmother and my mother. Okay. But my grandmother played a bigger role in my life. Sure. Yo, my grandmother loved herself. Yeah. She yeah. loved yeah. looking good. Sure. You know, so it's a principle okay. that I was raised with, you know. Uh, I mean, my grandmother at the age of 99, when she had dementia. 99. At 99. Wow. Because she passed on at 99. Sure. Um, you know, even with the dementia, every mm -hmm. single day she thought she was going to church. Oh, wow. So she would wake up and, and say to pants. us, yeah, I want my clothes. <laughs> yes, because yeah. Because Tina, now we're investing in different night dresses for her because yeah. people are coming to see her yeah. from the church and from w at home, you know, coming to visit her every day. No, 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 no. She was wearing her two-piece and she yeah. was still matching her clothes. Yeah, yeah. Her stockings, her heel, mm -hmm. and her straw hat. Dementia or not. Because and she was still reading her Bible. So, so I, was, I was really raised like that. She definitely departed in the hands of the Lord. She did. Yeah? Yeah, she did. She was a woman of God. Ne? Yeah. Um, on that note of the sentimental aspect of our lives, um, we got to know you. I don't know if willingly or unwillingly, through you falling in love, something that happens to all of us, something that we all desire, we all yeah. desire companionship, yeah. and we all desire the right companionship, a companionship yeah. that is healthy, a companionship that is here to serve us in life and for us to serve our partners back and just be in a healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. You got into a relationship with a very famous person, mm -hmm. um, and you can take us through the process. I'm going to give you the opportunity to just take us through the process from when you met to how unfortunately we are here today where we are. And I'm saying unfortunately, maybe you're going to say fortunately, because separations don't always mean things are bad. Some separations are for the good, mm -hmm. but we'll hear that as you go on. So when did it start? How did it start? It started beautifully. Sure. It was like a fairy tale. It was a dream. It was also beautiful because especially for me um after 12 years of being single and of me having promised myself i am going to die alone mm. i'll never ever fall in love mm. again i am done with that life i'm just going to raise my kids be on my own especially that uh, i am born of matriarchs mm -hmm, mm -hmm. who are so strong so mm, Sure, I don't know I'm putting this in one sentence, but for some reason, there's just a little bit of history of them not getting married, and that's very, very common in my family, mm -hmm. and them dying alone. So mm -hmm. for me, it, you, you know, when I met Latoya, because prior to me meeting her, mm -hmm. I took a decision that maybe this is our journey as a family. Maybe we are such strong women that uh, marriages do not work for us. Sure. So maybe this is the root. As I was watching my grandmother and my mother, I thought, and some of my f family members, by the way, who are females, who are very, very strong, who are the most beautiful human beings, you know, after watching them, I thought to myself, maybe this is the root that I am going and I made peace with it. Yeah. Um, until on my grandmother's 99th birthday, okay. I had invited Latoya's father to come and perform. Okay. Um, 
and Latoya's father brought his family with him. Okay. I think I've told this story so many times in the media. I'm just going to try and sure. make this particular one as brief as possible no because problem. I'm sure yeah, there's yeah. other important things that we yeah. need to talk about. So, yeah, basically, I, I met Latoya at my grandmother's um, 99th birthday. Mm -hmm. And sure, I'm not even going to lie to you. I think within a week of me meeting her, everything in me changed. Actually, maybe even a day after, because a day after we met, we were having our first kiss. Wow. And yes, that, that's exactly <laughs> after the kiss. Yeah, I was yeah. driving back home and all I kept on saying was like, wow, yeah, wow, yeah, wow, yeah. wow. At the time, I was in love with a Solimo Holo song. Na, 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 and you were playing yeah, it. Yeah, I was playing it. And I was just like, wow, wow, <laughs> wow, you know? And yeah, you know, the beginning of our love story is a very, very beautiful one. Mm -hmm. Because we met just before COVID. Okay. And we met on the 14th of February. We went into COVID on the 10th of March. And we had bonded so strongly and mm -hmm. were so inseparable mm -hmm. that we decided to go on lockdown together mm. because we didn't know how we were going to survive without each other, without each other yeah. you know. And we made very, very urgent arrangements for us to move in together, mm -hmm. you know, because I couldn't be in a space, she couldn't be in the space that I was in at the time. So we had to find a mutual place for for us to together. live in together. Yeah. And at this point, like I'm looking around, everyone is in panic mode because of the rules and regulations of lockdown and da da da. I literally ended up at a, you might even want to call it a hotel, mm -hmm. booking a penthouse at a hotel for us to stay because there was no time to be signing a lease, lease yeah, to be moving yeah. furnitures. Yeah. I needed to just, just yeah. rock up. And, and yeah, <laughs> it, it was worth it. Yeah. It was one of the most irresponsible financial decisions that I took, but I was that. Deeply in love. And happy. And happy. Yeah. And do you want me to tell you something? I do not regret it. Yeah. yeah Actually. Yeah, yeah, personally. Yeah. I do not regret anything yeah. that I've done in this marriage. Yeah. I do not regret any sacrifice mm -hmm. I've ever, ever made for Latoya. Mm -hmm. I meant well. It was from the bottom of my heart. Yeah. She meant the world to me. Yeah. Nothing else mattered mm -hmm. at the time but her. Mm -hmm. And... If you play that role in my life, because this is one thing that I kept on saying to her, that, you know, it would have broken me because my grandmother passed on the same year I met Latoya. Okay. And I said to her, this woman knew very well what she was doing. My grandmother loved me so much. She loved me so deeply. There is no way she was going to leave me alone. Yeah. Especially that her and my mother passed on two weeks apart from one another. Yeah. So I'm now losing two weeks apart. The people that I love the most, the people that your I anchors. live for, yeah, my anchors, anchors yeah. right? And I happened to meet Latoya at my grandmother's birthday. Five months later, my grandmother passes on. Yeah. So I kept on saying to her, do you know this was strategic? Sure. This is fate. This was written in the stars correct, correct. for us to have met. Correct. I said my grandmother knew that I was not going to survive her death. Mm. I was not going to survive my mother's death, mm. which is why my grandmother brought you in my life to come and fill up that gap. A new love. And a new love. Yeah, yeah. A new love. Yeah. But for me, the role that Latoya played at the time mm. was like a continuation. I get you. One of the things of my love for my grandmother. Mm -hmm. One of the things that she used to complain about after my grandmother passed and my mother passed is, Lebo, you haven't mourned. Mm -hmm. You haven't given yourself time to mourn. Mm -hmm. You did not cry when this was announced. You did not cry at the graveyard. I haven't been seeing you crying. Mm -hmm. You are not mourning. You need to mourn. You need to grieve, mm -hmm. you know? And I kept saying to her, and you have to understand now, much as... Uh, I played a big role in her spiritual beliefs, right? And yeah, her spiritual beliefs. I came from a completely different, or I come, because I still come from there. Mm. It's not a thing of the past. I come from a born again Christian okay. uh, f f family, right? So, you know, Abandona Bama Rosie and the ancestors, sure. right? But with me, because I was born and bred up by 
a woman of God by a born again Christian woman. Yeah. My grandmother used to say to me, do everything that you wish to do for me right now when I'm still alive and mm. I am breathing. Mm. Because the day you go and bury me, I don't want you to ever come and visit me and trouble me. That is where the, our journey ends. Mm. I am not your ancestor. Mm. I am not anyone's ancestor. Mm. Respect me and do everything for me right now when I'm still breathing and yeah. when I can see it. You want to buy me a goat? Buy it now. Yeah. You want to buy me a sheep? Buy it now. You want to buy me chickens? Buy them now. You want to buy me a cow? Buy it now. Yeah. And this is exactly what I did for my grandmother. Yeah. I lived yeah. for her. I slaughtered anything that she wanted mm. while she was still alive. To enjoy it. For, for her to enjoy it. Yeah, I bought yeah. her sushi. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I bought her sushi. I've had big authors from this country come and visit my grandmother because... Before I met Latoya also, I had my own profile, especially on social media. Sure, sure. And the reason everyone enjoyed me in this country was because of the love that I had for my grandmother. Yeah. How I spoiled her, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I documented her. Sure, sure, I documented sure. her, you know. We've had people like you come to say... Podcasts were not popular at the time, but we had people from shows saying, can we, and then I'd ask her for permission, and she'd say, no, my child, uh, I'd rather not, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. because she was a church-going person. Mm, Private, she was quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah we are born. Yeah. Um, so this is exactly what I did for my grandmother. So what my ex couldn't understand at the time was, you know, I've watched my grandmother throughout all these years. Even when she was getting weak, I started accepting. Even when she started praying and saying to God, I've had enough. Can you take me? Yeah. I was part of the journey. I was still enjoying pampering her. Mm -hmm. I was still enjoying taking care of her. I was still enjoying her breathing. Mm -hmm. I was still enjoying her going down on her knees, praying for her, for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm. I was enjoying hugging her. I was enjoying her scent. Yeah. I yeah. was enjoying lying next to her in bed mm. because that's all I ever knew. Mm. But the suffering was also not nice to watch. For her. For her. Yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. especially when someone reaches a point where they say for themselves, can I go? Sure. So by the time my grandmother passed on, I knew that I had served her. Mm. I had done my service. Mm the way she wanted me to. Yeah. I had no regrets. I had no guilt. Uh, I've watched her suffer. So even for me, it was like, thank you, Lord, for granting her what she has asked you to do for her. Yeah. Yeah. So it was also a sense of relief for me. So, so I've gone through life, even post her dying. Mm -hmm. When I was told, I said to God, it is well. Yeah. At her grave side, the same way she said to me, celebrate my life. You've done well, my child. Mm. You have served me. Mm. You've been a blessing. Mm. My grandmother did nothing, did nothing in her last days, but give me blessings awesome. all the time yeah. to say, God, thank you so much. I'm at this age. Yeah. I have lived the type of a life that I've lived because of this child, yeah. because she has taken care of me. Yeah. So my grandmother every single time like i've got videos and videos even from other people of my grandmother just giving thanks to god for my being yeah so yeah my 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 love story with 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 with, with latoya is it, it was just beautiful beautiful it was beautiful yeah, yeah it yeah. was it was beautiful i actually wish the beginning of my marriage with her on everybody yeah, who wants yeah, to fall yeah, in love, yeah, yeah. you know? Hey family, a quick one. Over 87% of you are consuming this content every single week, but are not subscribed. That means you are enjoying the growth conversations, but you are not liking, you are not subscribing, and you are not sharing it with others. So please, I plead with you, please subscribe so that you can share the love, you can share the growth, and you can share this wonderful platform and wonderful safe space with others as well. Enjoy the episode. Would you say though that a bit of that journey i guess it was romantic and beautiful as you say but maybe you gave yourself so much into that relationship because you were in a mourning period and she was the only thing you could love maybe you were transferring these acts of service from your grandmother 
to her now. And that's why you gave your all and you immersed yourself in this relationship. As if you know, and this is something that I actually haven't spoken about, yeah. right? Um, I hear the context that you are, or rather the direction that you're going to. Um, I think you're partly right, mm -hmm. but I will tell you where I went wrong, okay. where I went wrong, right? I'm an only child. Like I've me? got, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, I wonder if you also suffer from an only child syndrome I'll because I do. Deny. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, you know, um, there's a certain way we operate. Correct. Now that you're an only child, independent, you'll understand. Very independent. independent. Very, very, very independent, yes. right? Yes. Very, very self sufficient. Yes. Right? You know, you do not have anyone to count on. Absolutely. The cousins, then they'll come. They'll. You, you, just you know, won't. you don't have a sibling. You yeah, know. Yeah no, yeah. no one can be a sibling. Never. No one can play yeah, that role in your yeah. life, right? Um, so growing up, one of the things that I learned the most was self-love. Hmm. Actually, I was taught by this grandmother. Well, when it starts here and then it it, it grows internally. It. Yeah, you internalize it. Mm -hmm. you, you. So I've been big on self-love. Yeah. You know, that is why I project it on the outside, sure. right? And one of the biggest lessons that I taught my ex-wife in this relationship, actually in, in our marriage, actually the biggest lesson I taught her was self-love, mm. self-care, mm. taking care of self yeah. and putting yourself first. Yeah. Because in this life, no one should come before you. Sure. Maybe God, mm -hmm. who we pray to. Then Maybe you. in her case, her ancestors. Yeah. Then you... No Nothing one else. else. No one else. So there I was now falling in love with this woman, right? Who can't even go to a shop to go buy herself underwear, right? Right? Doesn't have decent underwear, literally, right? Because, no, the family wants this. There's no food there. This child is demanding this. So and so that. This, this, this. Everything, Right? Yeah. Everything matters besides her. Besides her. I sat her down. I sat her down very early in our relationship. I sat her down. And I said, do you know who matters the most in this life? Because remember now, even at this time, there's a buildup of stories of her telling me how she grew up. This is a child celebrity from the age of nine. Basically. This child mm. has been taking care of grown-ups from the age of nine. Mm. There's a temper, there's a psychology uh, parentalization or something like sure, that, sure, right? Sure. When it, and, and it's actual, psychologically damaging. It damages yeah. you completely. Correct. When at a very, very young age, you are made responsible mm. to take care mm -hmm. of other people, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. She was paying bonds at the age of nine. She was buying food. Uh, she was doing this, she was doing this, this is her money, because I don't, I don't know whether you want to call it child labor or yeah, what, yeah, but yeah. whichever way you look at it, sure. right? So this thing grew onto her, and then she marries this useless first husband, this Zimbabwean guy called Privilege. Mm -hmm. uh, unemployed, not, he starts, she starts taking care of her. She gets married right at the age of 19 or 18, because her father had to go sign to approve for her, something I'll never ever do to my daughter. Mm. If she gets married at 40, I'll be very, very happy. Right? Yeah. Ends up uh, getting married to this guy. Um, he's taking care of her. He's taking care of her. Goes to the second one. He, she takes care of him. She takes care of him. Like, she throughout her life, she's just always been responsible. And I said to her, I've never had a woman take care of me. Even in my marriage with a man, I took care of myself. Sure, sure. Uh, we can't be preaching equality. Yeah. And then someone is playing a bigger role yeah. than the other one. I hear you. And it's nice if your partner is bringing more money than you. But I said to her, with everything that you are doing, put everyone else after you. Yeah. Put yourself first. Yeah. Put yourself first. You know. But do you know what it, what happened in the process? I started putting her first in helping her and teaching her to put herself first. I completely forgot about myself. It became about her. her. Yeah, because of how much she this loved the, her. This still boggles my mind. Yeah. It's one thing, like when I think about it, I just want to hit my head against the wall right now. Do you know I bought myself underwear for the first time? This year. 
after we parted ways. I had been using the same underwear for four years. Because you made everything about her. Fortunately, before I met her, I just traveled to Turkey. So when I go to Turkey, you know, I stock up and yes, because yes, yes, clothing yes. is cheap there. Yes. So I still had brand new stuff. But why that brand new stuff or not, man? I'm the type, like, I, Mina, mm-mm, guys, I'm the type, I change my underwear every three to six months. Mm-hmm. You know, I must have new. And I, I looked at my underwear early this year and I was just like, a whole me. Huh? She was getting underwear every other day online. Like, I made her my project. Clothes were being delivered. (laughs) I I was just shopping and shopping and shopping and shopping and taking care of her. Taking care of Ubungoma Baake. Forgetting where I come from. I'm the one who's paid Lobola, right? I should be taking her to my church. Huh. Completely abandoned the church. Huh. I was climbing mountains and going to ri- rivers. Send Gogama by. Send Gogi Spandla. Spandla. Send Gogama beads. I didn't know I'm married to a young. Sure. So now I'm in front of the people who are trying to attack us or attack her by virtue of us having a bond. Whatever she's been attacked on, Nami, I'm automatically attacked her, whatever, they, those concepts, yeah, yeah. And I was listening to all of these things, all because of love, right? Now I'm also starting to do all of these things. Like, I got deep in. Huh? I completely forgot myself. I was not playing golf. I was not going to the gym. I was not running. I was not buying myself clothes. Actually, the only clothes that I've got from this marriage is when a designer said, because you guys are going to this event, I'm going to sponsor uh, an outfit. outfit." Uh, Actually, these pants uh, are one of those when we're going to an event. It's actually one of the things that, yeah, I've ever, ever bought. I completely, I completely forgot myself. At some stage in the marriage, the helper said to me, are you aware every week, this past December, every week, your washing is the two sets of pajamas that you wear, mm. five t-shirts, mm. never buy. Mm. That's your washing. And we are now talking about a woman who's gone to the Sunday World podcast to say, I was so manipulative. I was such a narcissist. I was so controlling that I have distanced her from the people that she loved. Lunge, huh? listen to this. Listen to this. Throughout my marriage, I lost my friends, right? Some people in my life didn't believe Kulento Yobutlos and whatever. Mm-hmm. So when they questioned Latoya, it was not negotiable. You cut them off. I cut them off. Yeah. I loved it that much. Yeah. It was yeah. not negotiable. So. And then during the process of the marriage, she had issues with so and so. Without blinking an eye, I cut them off. Mm. By the time I'm getting separated with this woman, I've got no one left in my life. Mm. Everyone is gone. Mm. And you know what? I cut them off. What was my life? My life was her children, mm. her family. In Dumba. In Dumba. Yeah. I'm a twasa. Yeah. Mara Dali Ukobel. Kufuga mina wo tri. Nyo shapeli scoop. I guess no shell scoop. That time, and buys and buys. Nishatu. Nyanak. Nyanatu. Namatosa rasa is witty bag the ganja. Right. I guess witty and that. Yeah. But I'm just thinking. Mushitu sansu to lepi. Kobelo obeyed. Yeah. The show must go on. The show must go on. Yeah. The trips I was going to, get the trips I had up on Gomabach, Nekisama Miketi, Nekisama di Pudi, Kisama di Nku, Kisama di Koko. I centered my life around her. So when this person boldly sits on national TV, on a national podcast, and says, she was so narcissistic, she distanced me from people. Exactly what the hell does she mean? What does she mean? What does she mean? I'd love for her to go to any podcast. And say, I gave up my life to go to this so and so friend of hers. This so and so friend of hers. We used to do this with it. I get. I, I. I can't tell you anything that I did with my life for the past four years. Naked do la Actually, 
if I've never believed in witchcraft, this is the one time I believe in witchcraft. Because when I look at my life for the past five years, I was a bloody zombie. Hmm. I, was a, I was a bloody zombie. Hmm. I was a bloody zombie. My role every day was to wake up a whole me. Wake up. Go to Muti shops. I had a journal for her. Sometimes I wish I must just bring these things with me to interviews, you know? Mm -hmm. I had a journal for her. My handwriting. Because Lomundu, who's claiming to be this big gobella, doesn't even know Jack. Konamanje. If I can give, be given an honor, honorary doctorate, your big gobella means I don't understand. Ask me what I don't know about Ubungom. Yeah. Bring in your angela. Mazis is so interview, I mean. Nzobachel. And don't let you let to hell. Nzobachel. What happened? There's no muti I do not know. I used to go to Faraday. Benkala ne nyanga. Benkala na magela. On her behalf. Because she's what? She's bloody dysfunctional. I used to. I have a dictaphone. I used to record and I used to have a piece of paper. Yeah. Lo mu to nani 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 no pusha into so. Lo uyenza so na so na so na so pusha into so. Me. A whole me. My one uncle who passed on. Eh? You know, and I should have listened to him. Yeah. Do you know what he said? Yeah. Never marry a woman. You love more than she loves you. Marry someone who loves you more than you love them. Arwana Lebu, you are in trouble. Hmm. My uncle, bless his soul, Malume Lita, the man who went and paid Lobola for Miko Boletoy. He, he saw said it. he saw it. Yeah. He saw it. But this uncle now, because at some point he used to spend so much time with him. We are driving with him, you know. Sometimes when Letoy said generations, I'm driving with him to go buy Mutis. And, and he said to me, Why don't you actually surprise at this? Because he's an ex-teacher. Okay. He says, this thing, man, is very tedious. Mm -hmm. He said, no, 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 let's set up. We're going to start typing these mutis, what they do. Da, da, da. One day we're going to bind them and present them to her as a book. Mm. As a book. That was my job. That was my job. Every day. Every day I'm cool. Every day, my life was centered around Latoya. I served Latoya breakfast for the year that she was working, for the whole year. I packed lunch for her. She came home to dinner ready. Hmm. And that's the only time she's ever worked. She's an actress. They do not earn. Yeah, yeah. They do not. I've taken care of this woman yeah. for Latoya to boldly sit on a national platform and say, I used to be a breadwinner. She stole money from me. Huh. What is she referring to? How low can you be? Huh. Why don't you just tell the truth? Why don't you? The situation might be what it is right now, but you cannot erase the good that was there. Huh. Right? Yeah. You know, much as I was born and bred in a born-again Christian family, when I was confirmed at the Methodist church, because my mom was Methodist, yeah. there's a sermon our pastor, still remember his name very well, uh, Pastor CB did, okay. right? Do you know, in the pulpit, he had a white sheet. He had a white sheet. And then, during the sermon, I can't remember, I've written it down somewhere, but I can't remember, there's a verse in the Bible that he was quoting. So, as he was doing this sermon, as he was doing this sermon, and I was still a child, right? I mean, it's 16, I'm still a child. He then went to this sheet. You see how white the screen is? Yeah. In the middle, he put a dot with a black marking pen. And he started asking the congregation. He said to the congregation, what do you see there? What do you see there? Mm. They said, we can see a black, black dot. dot. Yeah. They said, everyone said we can see a black dot. Yeah. Let me tell you the message. Yeah. Let me tell you the message that came out of this. This is the reality of our lives. Yeah. And this story that I'm telling you, I have told to Latoya before. Mm -hmm. The black dot in a white sheet. Right? When shit hits the fan. When life doesn't work out the way we want it to work out, yeah. we forget about the white sheet. That the white sheet exists. Mm. All we ever see is, that small is the black dot. Yeah. Right? And this is what has happened right now with the fallout 
of my marriage. Mm. That black dot could have been as toxic as it was. Mm. I'm sitting here with a woman right now. I'm in this podcast because there's someone out there who's forgotten about the white sheet. The entire sheet. The entire sheet. Yeah. Someone who's forgotten. Her son did not have milk. Her son did not have napkins. She did not have clothes. She did not have sanitary pads. Hmm. She had nothing hmm. when I took her in. She had nothing. She was staying in a bedroom in a grandmother's house. Hmm. I took her from there. She's forgotten all about that. She's forgotten she was bought a car. She was being gifted with a car. Hmm. She's forgotten the fancy engagement that she had, which cost uh, almost 200,000 rands. She's forgotten the wedding huh? that cost almost half a million rands. Huh? She's forgotten the clothes throughout the process, the birthday parties huh? that were thrown for her. I've never had a party ever since I've married Latoy. She disregarded me so much because I taught her to love herself. Huh? She'd think about it. The week of, I planned her bed these months before. As we're talking right now, because last year, I thought, I do not care how broke I get. My wife is going, this is last year, before we separated. Mm -hmm. My wife is going to have the fleshiest 40th birthday. It's her birthday very soon on the 7th mm. of September. Yeah. I invested that money, I put it away. I don't care how broke we were. I was just not taking that money out. As soon as we are done with this podcast, I will show you this investment that has just come through. Because it doesn't matter what happened. She met her so much. And exactly. after her giving me her history, how with these men she never had birthdays, how she lasted a birthday when her mother was alive, I thought to myself, one of the commitments I am making is for this woman, for as long as I'm married to her, to have birthday parties. Mm. And very fleshy ones, memorable ones. Yeah. Right? There's a woman who wanted to pursue her music career. Yeah. Right? I wrote proposals. I wrote proposals. Um, she doesn't even have an album. Huh. I had to sit there and conceptualize to say, because you do not have music that's out there, what is it that you are going to offer the public? Sure. And I said, okay, Lendo Koyobum is growing big. Who's investing in that? Me. Huh. Me. Right? Uh, I said, I came up with the concept. Let's do a concept, mm -hmm. something that has never been done before. Mm -hmm. Let's celebrate that. Mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately, things did not work out according to plan sure. because of whatever went wrong with the state theater. Yeah. I'm doing all of this for her. I'm introducing her to things. I'm putting myself uh, at, 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 at the, I'm forgetting about myself. Second best. Right? Second yeah. best. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My life became about her. Mm. Only for this person to go to Sunday World and says, Go Sunday World. I was so desperate. Me, all me. Let me guess. I was so desperate for me to come out with her because she was a celebrity. Mm. Look, you know, let me make you clear on something. Do you know? I discovered that that party got Gogwa. Oh, do you know, actually, this person is an actress. Mina, and trust me, I've had a crush on her in the past. But I can't remember what's the song that they were singing when we were growing up, her and the sisters. Yeah, yeah, I knew yeah. her from then. And then a couple of years before I met her, I saw her doing an interview yeah. with the father. Yeah. So I'm a sapiosexual, you sure, know. Sure. So I'm like, oh, this girl is bright. Yeah, and yeah. I love the fact that they were openly talking about... Mm -hmm. uh, a family met and black people don't do that sure, you know sure. so ooh, only to find out actually they've got the deepest darkest secrets mm. and right now it's freaking them out that i'm talking ab uh, about some of these things i don't know when i'll get to that point where i just like spill everything out yeah. you know but anyway that's neither here nor there um she now goes to sunday world to say i was desperate for us to come out i was pressing i was pressing i was pressing i was pressing she's not telling the truth mm. okay Nkulu. I've had an incident where, this is before I came out, I've had an incident where literally I was forced to come out, right? I was forced to come out. And I don't like how I came out, but I've accepted it is what it sure, is and it happened sure, the way it happened, sure. right? So 
Min and I were so all over each other and all over the place, right? So I'm saying to her, and I started this discussion. I said, because after I was forced, uh, nothing was that, and it came out in the media, it became big in the media. But then I was firm at the time, and then I started going bush, and and and, and my acceptance kept a lot of people quiet. So, sure, right? sure, sure. But yeah, so if people are saying, I've never been once, before I met, I've never been once seen her on Generations, mean. Mm-hmm. I didn't know she acted on Generations, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, when I met her, she was struggling, she was yeah, poor. Yeah, yeah. The situation was bad, yeah, yeah. you know? And all I did was to try and help out. Provide. And provide. Be, give which us is security. What I, and I take pride in providing. Yeah. I come from a poor family. I'm a nobody. I've been fending for myself from the age of 18. Mm. I left home at the age of 18, never ever to go back. Mm. I've known nothing and not to rely on anyone yeah. but myself. Yeah. So I don't know how at my age, a woman claims she was a breadwinner taking care of me with 35,000 rands that I earned 20 years ago. Mm. It does not make sense when she's got so many responsibilities. She's got herself to take care of. She's got four kids to take care of. She's got a family of 10. Mm. One side that she needs to take off, another family of seven, another side that she needs to take care of. What am I benefiting from that? Huh. What am I benefiting from that? At what point were you a breadwinner? You know, a, a friend of mine said to me, Labu, you know, we think differently at people. Yeah. Maybe her definition of breadwinner was she used to buy bread in the house, literally. And I said, okay, now that makes sense. I can't deny the fact that she yeah. used to buy Albani. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But my definition of being a breadwinner mm-hmm. is something else. Sure, so sure. maybe she's a breadwinner because she bought bread, literally. Mm. Yeah. When does it go wrong, Lebo? When does it start going wrong? Or rather, when do the signs of this toxicity, the black dot you speak of, when do they start? You know... You know, love is blind, right? Okay. Love is very blind because it's only now when this whole mess erupts, explodes, that you now sit back and you also scratch your head to say, when did this happen? Okay. And hey, you're thinking, you know what? The first week this person told me this. What about? Mm-hmm. Hey, because you're blinded by love. Yeah, well, what, under the carpet. Mm, so, the signs were always there. Cool, you know? The signs were always there, but... Sure. I mean, the denial... Even now, I go through moments of denial. What are the signs? To, to say... There's been a lot. There's been a lot. One, when I sit with myself right now... Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I love... I'm an only child. Yeah? I'm an only child. Mm-hmm. I love time alone. Yeah. I'm very big on meditating. Yeah. Um, 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 um. You know, I, I, I love, I love, sure, I love peace. I love yeah. quiet. Yeah. Uh, I'm very claustrophobic. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I still struggle to go to crowded places. Mm-hmm. If I'm there for 30 minutes, one it's hour, a lot. it's a lot, yeah. you know. So you see what love does to you. You already have three kids. But your kids understand how you operate. Like, we can be in the same house with my kids, but they can go for a day without seeing. Because sometimes I really just want time out. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it's not personal. I'm not yeah. going through depression. Or mm-hmm. I'm reading. Mm-hmm. I'm writing. Uh, yeah, I, I just need time out. Mm-hmm. So I'm marrying a woman with four kids. I've got three. There's the two of us. It means there's nine of us in the house. Huh. I should have thought about that. Right? Same house. Same house. Uh, Although, yeah, her kids are scattered though. Uh, At some stage, even mine were all over the place. It's just been a big mess. It's just been drama. This is like a Netflix series. Our lives were like a Netflix series. Right? Um, So, what happens now? So, there's that element, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, as you also get to know one another, you start telling each other about your past and whatever. Things that were red flags for me in previous 
relationships, I started overlooking mm. because of my love for her. Mm. You know, when people talk of, there's a word for it, body count. Yeah, yeah. Body yeah, count. Yeah. yeah. But, but you know now, when you're starting, Mutu is starting at 15. What about two weeks later, we've gone to 18. And then Ninning went to visit so and so. Hey, we are sitting at 21. What about all of those things? And also with the work that I've done, so that was another issue, right? And I used to cringe all the time. Also given I'm also really big on this these body count things. I'm I'm very sorry, right? But I made it very clear, especially when it came, came comes to men, if you are a woman, right? And maybe I'm being judgmental and I sincerely apologize for it, but it matters. Mm -hmm. Right? You can't choose how I want to date, right? Um, um and then there was an issue now around you know your background. And your background being what has happened to you before in the past, psychological issues, yeah, traumas, yeah, and yeah, that, yeah. and a lot of things were not said. Mm -hmm. I'm now finding out a lot of things in the marriage. Through other people? No. Personal disclosure. Okay. Um, because I've worked with women with, who, who suffered GBV and femicide, you know, I found them to be very fragile okay. and I've always tiptoed around them sure. to a point that sometimes, um, oh, well, just to give you a bit of background, I was very naughty before I met Latoya. Mm -hmm. Oh, I shame. I, I was all over Jobek. Mm -hmm. Actually, I was all over this country, like born in the 12 years. Yeah. I shame. Yeah, when I can talk about body count. Yeah, my tender. Born, <laughs> born, born. Yes, in. Tender, subscriptions, <laughs> Netflix, <laughs> show Max, X, 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 born, young kinto. Yeah, born. Yeah. And I'm having fun. But, you know, I'm kind of like considerate in all of this because I always try to try and get to know your background. And sure. especially that I was working with women who've suffered a GBV, you know. Mm -hmm. So I was very, very sensitive over that matter. You know, so time and again, I found myself because of the trauma I was going through, helping these women, going to counseling with them, going to courts with them. Something in me just said to me, Ish, these people need to be treated with kid gloves, you know. So moving forward, don't touch them, actually be the help that they need, you know. Um, so now I find out. People say I'm careless when I use the word, the word rape, but it is what it is, right? It's the truth. Find out in my marriage, I was raped, one. I was raped, two. I was raped, three. I was raped, four. Hmm. Four different stages of your life by four different men. You do not tell anyone. You do not talk to anyone. You, you are just going through life with all of these traumas. And I said to her, these things are going to work against us in the future. There is no amount of muti. There is no amount of you going to Faraday and buying muti to mix muti and pepper in order for these men's dicks to fall. That is going to help you sort these issues out. You need to sort yourself out. You don't need to be dealing with those men. You left them. You didn't press charges against them. Mm. In the past, that was you going to deal with them. They are moving on with their lives. Stop throwing money. Stop taking money from our house to say you are building puppies on these men and you are busy pinching their puppies with a pin so that their puppies can fall off. They, their puppies are not going to fall off. You've missed out on an opportunity of getting your justice. And that is within the law system. Mm. Right? You've missed out on that. So I appoint psychological... Uh, uh, services for her as usual only for her to have a fallout with the psychologist because uh, this woman knows better she knows better she knows better that is why I also want to come to this issue uh, her being a gobella that is why she could never be a gobella because she could never finish anywhere because she knows better than everyone else huh. you know so 
just for me to finish off on the issue of air having been predated on, mm -hmm. right? Not only that, now she's now in my marriage with me, accused four men of raping her, right? She goes and she sleeps with a man right here in Node, right here up the road from here. Actually, I got traumatized Come when here. I discovered that your studios were here, right? She goes and has sex with a Nigerian man, what we now call a Jolofina. In your right? marriage? In our marriage. I'm telling you about something that happened year before last. Huh. In 2022, December. She goes and sleeps with a Nigerian man in exchange for cocaine. Right? Lungelo, you don't even want to know how I discovered this. But I discovered it sitting at home all by myself. She still thinks to date I hired a private investigator. I did not. I figured it all out by myself. Right? When I catch her out, do you know what she says? I was scared to tell you because he raped me. Can you go with me to the police station so that I go open a case against him? I said to her, fuck off. I, I'm quoting myself about him. I said, fuck off, you are lying. Hmm. He did not rape you. I said, you were here at fashion. Yeah, you know where fashion is. Hmm. She was here at fashion. The police station is 200 meters away. The note police station is right here. I said, do you want to tell me after getting raped, you could walk to another bar to go get more drunk and Uber to another place to go get drunk and you could not walk to a police station? I said, I'm not opening a case against this guy. And I had a conversation with this guy and he said to me, let me tell you the truth. My wife was sitting, she said she found me and my wife sitting in the car. She came and she told us she doesn't know where you are. She's stressing about you. She called me and my wife was giving her words of comfort. How low can you be? She went and slept with this man in a toilet of a nightclub whilst the man's wife, who was consoling her that things will be okay in our marriage, is sitting in the car waiting for their husband. Now you want me to go open a case of rape against this guy. I refused. Until two days later, she confessed the truth that I asked him for a fucking exchange for cocaine. Mm. Straight to my face. Eric. Huh? Hi. Eric. And we are sitting here now, right? With this person who's gone through all of those traumas, I'm not using the traumas against what she's accusing me of, mm -hmm. but I will make you understand where we got, where I'm sitting right now, where I'm being called a perpetrator by Latoya. Mm -hmm. And Latoya needs to start telling the truth. Please, when you find time, watch that uh, uh, Sunday World podcast and just see how she strategically avoids and evades questions that she needs to answer. Mm. I also don't understand why the interviewer was not pressing, right? How she stretched it. Everything is sitting with a legal tip. I'm not going through any legal issues. She's done nothing. Mm. This person is sitting there just doing nothing, mm. right? Uh, uh, this is what happened in my marriage, Abut. So remember now I'm big on GBV and femicide. And, so and, 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 for your work. Um, it, um, I was doing this as a volunteer, okay. by the way. Um, at the time, yeah. I was a spokesperson for a government department. Sure. Yeah, but sure. I was so involved in this work that it actually overpowered my work yeah, yeah, yeah. as a spokesperson, you know. Um, and this is how this woman found me. And the day I met it's one of the things that we spoke about, right? There's a person who's got a history and something that has never been spoken about because... I'm sorry, you know, I'm I'm a bit scattered, right? Okay. I'm sorry, but it's let okay. me try yeah. al align this. Sure. This is a problem that happens to people like myself when you get married or are in a relationship with a celebrity huh. because it makes you voiceless. Huh. Let me tell you how it makes you voiceless. And you start suffering this abuse in the house, huh. right? Because these people thrive on likes. Mm. So right now, when you are staying with this person in the house, uh, something happens. Generation says she's not coming back, mm -hmm. right? 
she posts, I will not be going back on generation. Hey, hey, hey. We want you on generations. We are never ever gonna watch generations without yeah, you. Yeah, then yeah. so they they take a hype on on the likes and the comments. You know they're popular. They're popular. Correct. Well, but yeah. they hype on that. Uh, I also saw an interview with the wife here. This guy, what drip? What's yes. his name? Yes, Mr. Likau. Likau, yeah. right? And you know Abuti. I felt that woman's pain to the core mm. of, of staying with someone who's a celebrity or who's in the limelight and they use that against you you already know that if i come out and say this is what i'm going through i'm not gonna get my street justice mm. if you know what i mean yeah right no one is gonna believe me right and Leto has always been abusing this mm. for one thing, for the other. When she was with me, I watched her do it against her exes mm. and it worked. Mm. It worked like you will not believe, right? And remember in me watching that, it's also creating um, fear mm -hmm. in me mm -hmm. that yo, if I ever break up with this person, yeah. I guess Andy can mm. because there's no publicly fighting her, which is why I took a decision I'm going to do this. I do not care who's going to hear my story, but I am going to put it out there so that it's in record mm -hmm. because Latoya has done nothing but manipulate, connive, and lie to the society. Let her speak the truth. Mm -hmm. Let her tell the truth. She's sitting there playing victim. She's done nothing all her life but playing victim. But play victim. I can tell you stories, horror stories, from people who are saying it had to, it had to take you to be in this position for you to understand even what these men that she was with were going through. They just felt very voiceless. Hmm. You've got a privilege there whose main focus in life is to just sell Daha. I support Lekau's wife. I, I'm glad she spoke out. Because these people are abusing us. We know the abuse that we live with. Mm. We know. And this is a woman who's sitting with 1.5 million Facebook followers, almost a million uh, Instagram followers, 200,000 uh, 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 ex it's Twitter, yeah. followers, yeah. right? When I got married to her, because of what was happening, whatever, I thought this thing is going to drive me mad. I closed all my social media accounts. I'm not mm. even on social media. Mm. I'm not even on social media. Right? She hires influencers to attack me. I'm not even there. Mm. The only thing that I can do is to tell my truth. Mm. She is lying, but she knows that her lies will be supported because of her followers. Mm. But I do not care about that because... I've got a conscience unlike her. Mm. And my truth is between me and my God, not the public. I don't need anyone's affirmation. Mm. I don't need anyone's approval to survive. I'm not her. I don't hop as constantly as she does from one relationship to the other. Mm. Put the blame on other people. Mm. I've got exes. I don't go around painting them black mm. to the whole society for me to try and look good. Latoya needs to go onto the mirror and look at herself. Mm. She has done nothing in life but fuck up. Mm. Latoya fucks up. Mm. Latoya is fucked up. Mm. And Latoya moves from people to other people. Right now it's her. Mas Chaba this, Ndete this. People that she met, we met together recently, right? She saw an opportunity there. She's going on and uh, them, this, them, this, them, this. Wait until she fucks Mas Chaba's husband. Hmm? She'll teach Mas Chaba a lesson. Hmm? If she could sleep with her own sister's husband. Hmm? And this person plays a victim. No, it's always someone's fault. This is what, this is the torture I went through in my marriage. A, point, a finger was always pointed at someone. Huh. Look at this, Mkul. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah. Look at... I don't know how many times I've said this to her. Mm. You know, no one is hearing me out. I don't know how many times in my marriage have I said to Latoya, Latoya, stop lying. Mm. It was 
was a big thing in our marriage. The lies. The lies. Latoya lies. Hmm. The way Latoya lies is frustrating. Do you know when you get to a point in your marriage where you just like, okay. Why are you saying, okay, okay, at this point, I don't know if you're telling me the truth or not. We got to that point. No, I'm lying because I'm scared. Girl, you scared of what? Because eventually when the truth comes out, this is what puts you in an awkward position that you actually need Correct. to be scared about. Correct. Because if you tell the truth, yeah. the person must accept yeah. the truth for what it is, what it is yeah. uh, or not. And it's either the person deals with the truth yeah. or they do not. Yeah. But at least you know that you could have told your truth. Yeah. So what's the point of telling the lie? Because yeah. more often than not, actually, even the lies that you tell gets you into more trouble than when you could have just told the truth. Mm. You speak about lies, um, persistent lies to me, which, I mean, I can't diagnose a person. I'm not a medical professional, but it sounds like pathological lying. Or she is. In, or you're insinuating pathological lies. I'm not insinuating um, it. I'm saying she is a pathological liar. In the media recently, there's a story on, on, on television where there's a young gentleman who says even Um Sebenzi, the work that she does with Induma and her ancestry, that's also a lie. I mean, I think the name of the show is Fake Kobela. Yes. Um, you also alluded earlier on that the work that she built with Indum, it Indumba and her ancestry, it's actually your intellectual property. You've done all the research. You you have the book that you've helped her do the, the multi things in. There are points where you'd have to play the drum. Um, just take me through that. Um, okay. It, uh, not, yeah. Your concept is your intellectual property, but I don't want it. I don't want ownership to it because uh, actually as soon as I parted ways with her is as soon as uh, I parted ways with that lifestyle. Okay. I'm happy going home. Going back to God. Going back to God. Sure. Uh, and by the way, God has never gone anywhere. But I've just said Power. to my God, yeah. listen, you've taught me not to judge. Mm -hmm. You've taught me uh, to love. Mm -hmm. another human being the yeah. same way that you love me sure. so sure. I'm taking her with everything that she is Correct. the only thing that I could have done was to continue having a better relationship with my God I hear you yeah I hear you. but I kind of like moved away from that a bit okay right on the matter of uh, fake gobel Lugel. now I'm gonna sit here right and say to you I'm, I'm now confirming to you and actually, I wish I can have a show on uh, Fig uh, on Mojana Fig mm -hmm. and confirm to them that yes, Latoya is a Fig Gobella. Hmm? She's a Fig Gobella. Let me tell you why. If she could sit in that show and say to this boy, "You are an agent of the devil." Now I'm the devil, so this boy is the agent, right? This Gabelo boy. Huh. This is a boy I met for two days in my house. Before I kick Latoya out of the house. Mm. In that two days, I don't have an interaction of more than personal five hours with this boy. Mm -hmm. And I've never sent this boy to a bottle store, mm. personally. If he was sent, he was sent by Latoya. I've hardly ever interacted with this boy, right? Until the time when they were leaving. And he just came to me to say, but my family left me here. What am I going to say to my family? I said to him, those are things for you to discuss with Latoya. Right? I want to get involved. I just want you guys out of here. Right? I've never had any interaction with this boy. No interaction whatsoever. Right? As it stands, I'm trying to get people to try and find him because I want to have a conversation with this boy. Mm. So you are saying you are a gobella, right? Or you're sangom. So you're going on a show, you're sangom. You're saying you are shakubai. And the devil has sent an agent. Uguti is a demander in I've never done that. So you are a bloody fake gobella because I'm a simba. I call on Jay Shakubai. Ninganapi me. Ninganapi. I've never sent this boy. I don't know where this boy is. Actually, after they left my house, I did not give a damn. About her, what's happening with her? I blocked her. I forgot her existence. Mm. 
So how am I now finding uh, Lithuasano? As far as I'm concerned, they're still together wherever they are. Oh, to this boy who I'm bending, you can't I really don't know, Lugelo. I really don't know. So you go on national TV to say I'm not a fake gobela, but prove that you're a fake gobela. Huh. So because... People who watch Faye Gobella are people who've tossed or initiated like her. They believe one another because maybe Bashakuba Manga Bongeke. Because they believe the fact that Ushakube Uguti, Ubo Nuguti, I'm the devil who sent an agent. I did not. I did not. I did not send this boy. She said, bullshit. I've got nothing to do with this. Yeah. So she proved just how much of a Faye Gobella she is. So one of the things that's surprising me on this show is. She's saying she charges 10,000 rands. How? For people to come into us. This person used to charge 50,000 rands. How much? 50. Five zero. Yeah. And before you come in, you must pay 20,000 rands. Just to see her. Right now, actually, as we speak, one of the girls who came into Twasa sometime last day is like, I, I've actually been trying to find you and Latoya. So someone showed me, or I saw the show, Yafi Gobela. Latoya took my 20,000 rands. I've been begging her that I know I didn't stay for over a week, but I was saying at least she must return my 10,000 rands. Huh. I said, hey, ni yang fag. Huh. Because once again, I'm going to be told, called an agent. Huh. A devil that sent an agent. I said, find a way of dealing with it. She says, I want my money back. How was I charged 50,000 rands? She's saying she's charging 10,000 rands. How is Latoya in January a breadwin? January, ne? Because I kicked out of my house on the 1st of January. How is she taking 2,800 rands from someone she's saying she was doing him a favor? Huh? And at this point, she went where she went. She even stole. She's the one who stole. She took groceries from the house. Literally took groceries. I was going to share for her equal or something, help them out if they needed help. They left with groceries. So that shows you her financial status. Why did she take 2,800 rents from that boy? Uh, huh? In January, when she doesn't have resources, she says she was doing him a favor. Instead of answering, well, oh, and then she goes on to say she was being beaten up, and, and, and who the hell was beating her up? I was hardly in the house for those two weeks until I came back a couple of days before New Year. I was hardly in the house. Letoya and I were done. Nkulu. We were done. I did not want her in my bedroom. I did not want her anywhere near me. Yeah. I was suffering so much emotionally. Every time I saw Latoya, I haven't vomited ever since beginning of this year. I don't know what vomit looks like. She knows when I'm angry. When I'm emotionally not okay. Yeah. The first reaction from my body is to vomit. I did nothing but vomit. To a point that after she cheated on me, the one time I tried to make love to her, I vomited on her. Mm. So she's going to fake Gobella to say she's lying. She was being beaten around. She was, I was so not, all I kept on asking her is for her to leave my house because I've got nowhere else to go. She's got family. She's got, I've got nowhere to go. She must leave. We were hardly even talking. We were walking past one another when I was there. I was not beating her up. She's lying. She's lying. And the assault in my marriage, I am reiterating. It's something she refuses to talk about in the interviews. They were started by Latoya. Latoya has assaulted me three times before I defended myself the fourth time. And these three times when I was assaulted, I never mentioned. She's talking about when I... Defended myself. She wants to glamorize that. So she is not taking responsibility. Every time she's been interviewed, every time she's been asked questions about where the assault starts, she, she, she runs away from it. She does not answer. Do you know what I was told? When the child hit me the first time? Do you know what her father said? I told you when you married her that you are marrying Umdwana Wamad Rose. Kuko Anale Rosilene daughter, Elena Jealous. Horwena, 
Mwana o wa musadi. So you need to understand how nyezi eh, eh, lisango amenye. Yeah, yeah. Oshabu wa gili dozi. Arletoa is not violent. Oshabu wa gili dozi. Mkulu. Talk about the mind fuck. Huh? Hey, you know, when you now start even saying, hey, maybe we intellectualize, intellectualize life too much, Robin. You're thinking, hey, no se zik shabu wa gili dozi. That is how it was justified. Let her have some alcohol, but I went to Nigeria and drug deal. Who did like it? Lozi last Feb. And it's at this point, Kiri, man. So much. How can I tell you, Lozi last Feb? Yeah. So basically, I can't. I can't have a pill. Life is like a control. I can't. Give me Lozi. So let her is perfect. This wife I'm married to is perfect. But this my Lozi is better. Indifferent. Hey man, who na le na hutu ki butinyan? Hey, ling ni si zele rosi leo. Kilo na na ling chap, butinyan. Hutu butinyan na ona le square. Hutu le chow kubala le musadi. Hey grandmother, to my face, to my face. When this matter hutu le chow went and cheated with him, are what were you thinking when? Because how na baby. Kiri kong kunwa ke. Let the two men that she was married to ban and lady baby. She cheated on, and she was not apologetic about it. She called the family and the one man to say, "I've cheated on him. I no longer want him." Kiri so bored because never na li pipi na kina limi nwan. Why did she cheat on them? So it's true when they say, when someone tells you who they are, believe them. She she told me. I can't even deny it. She told him that I cheated on them. The ones men who was oh both of them by the way, there are men who were struggling. I guess that is why she could settle for fingers. Um, and not only that, they used to say it's a my kilo panda. So when you are a man and you are saying, especially the second one, at least this one, the other one was a drug deal, so you could fit. Let her and the kids with the drug man, which is what he's still doing right now. So the second one was useless, useless, useless. He used to say to let her straight on the face, "Zamolo pand." So let her used to go and panda, and bring back money home. Yeah. So I was asking the grandmother. So na I cannot peep, but the other two never nailed the peep. So why was she cheating? I'm still waiting for an answer. Lebo. A lot has happened. A lot, in, Abu. In, in, in your relationship, um, and I hope there is healing because you, you you've been an activist for gender-based violence. You've helped other people heal. You've helped other people begin their own healing journey. And I hope one, as you are speaking, as you said, that the reason you are speaking is because you're a voice for people who are voiceless, who are um, allegedly harmed by celebrities, right? Yeah. Um, and I hope by you coming to platforms like these where you can be able to have your thoughts, to have your truth expressed, it is helping you in your healing process. I do further suggest that you go back to who you are. You, you said something yeah. special to me that at the beginning of this conversation, you said your relationship with God and how you were raised with God shaped you and made you yeah. the beautiful, kind person who's self-sufficient, yeah. who just trusts in God, who's self-aware. Because when you're self-aware in life, you're able to make healthy yeah. decisions. Yeah. You're able to have boundaries. Yeah. You're able to spot red flags. Yeah. So I hope as you progress in this journey that you find healing more than anything. Yeah. Um, I can see the good person in you. Yeah. Um, you are speaking out okay. of hurt like any other person who's been hurt, who has loved and love didn't serve them back. And I really, really hope in, in conclusion, as we end this conversation, that you do find that healing. Yeah. And, and I hope that this platform brings you that healing. And just one more question. Do you think, not to get back together, but is there any ounce of hope that you and, and Latoya will just be civil and forgive each other? Um, you know, Lungelo, whether you want to believe it or not, um, actually, this whole fight, right, has compromised me and my work in the most unimaginable way. Yeah. Or let me rather say, it had potential okay. of compromising me in the most unimaginable way. But because I serve a living God, yeah. right? Yeah. So many miraculous things yeah. have happened. Yeah. 
There's been shifts. Mm. Like the way my life is working out right now. Yeah. The people that I've surrounded myself with. Mm. The prayer warriors mm. that I've surrounded myself with. Yeah. Right now, much as I am still weak in the Lord, much as I'm still weak in prayer, the way I am fighting mm. Mm. Uh, is proving to be the most beautiful thing or process and journey that I'm going through. Mm. Just to let you know, when this whole thing started, right? That was the one who was going around planting the seed. Eventually, a journalist found out about this. So they sent me questions, right? So my publicist, uh, Pel Magegan Mube, then sits me down and says, no, 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 guys. I know this is a mess, whatever, but we are going to phone Latoya's publicist, Nas Chaba Kubar, right? Her and I are going to take a decision. We are going to do a public uh, joint, statement. joint statement. And then Nas Chaba never answered Pell. Pell called Latoya. Latoya said to, to, to Pell, only now you call me. Fuck off. All we wanted, none of this would be happening. All we wanted was to take out a joint statement to say we are parting ways amicably. So let me tell you what's happening, right? Given the industry that I'm in, this had serious potential of damaging my career. But Akiri, apparently she's releasing a song. So any publicity for her is good publicity. Yeah. So this was how low huh? these people could go because this is when now this the journalist started running wild because at the launch she said this is her healing song because of the trauma that I have caused her. Let her must go revisit all her rape traumas. She must go revisit her childhood parenting her parents trauma. She must revisit. She must not come and point a finger at me. Actually, she must ask questions about how I am surviving the trauma that she has caught, caused me. Because she found me healed. She found me knowing myself. She found me with all the self-love. She found me self-sufficient. She took everything away from me. She turned me into a mess that she is. But thanks to the God that I am serving, that I chose to fight. This marriage with Leta nearly finished Mimkulu. Another story for another day. When I, I will come, actually, we can't even have coffee. It can just yeah, be a nice yeah, little chat yeah. uh, outside of the yeah, studio. Because we're running out where, of time. Yeah. Where out of pain, out of emotional pain. Yeah. Now, I've never suffered from depression in my life. Up until this marriage, where I literally could not even put food in my mouth. I was going through so much pain. I thought I'm getting a heart attack every single day. I was vomiting blood because I could not eat anything. I lost so much weight. I lost so I, I was finished in cool. But God restores. I serve a living God. God restores. The, 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 you know, just the other day, I, I broke into song with my other aunt. Um, and I said, you know, this woman's knees did not bleed for me not to survive this life, for me not to succeed, for me not to... Sure, I'm cool, I'm getting emotional. Yeah, we getting can go on yeah. Thank you so much, it's been a privilege. Yeah. And as I said, I hope that this conversation, as this platform is a healing space, contributes to that healing journey you're on. And thank you guys for listening. If you're listening on audio platforms, thank you for watching. If you're watching us visually, um, I hope you learned from this conversation that life is very gray and there is truth that you may not see beyond the truth that you think you know. I'll see you in the next episode. Introducing the epitome of luxury living. 
Kalu Luxury Villas and Suites, your private sanctuary of opulence and elegance. Nestled amongst the lush, sun-kissed landscapes of Durban, KwaZulu-Natal, this Kalu Luxury Villa is a paradise of tranquility, offering breathtaking panoramic views of the neighborhood. Step into a world of refined luxury where every detail has been meticulously crafted to create an atmosphere of sophistication and comfort. This villa is kept within a gated and secure property for your peace of mind. The Kalu Villa is available for both short-term and long-term stays, making it the ideal location for your next vacation or special event. This villa boasts spacious living areas and floor-to-ceiling windows that flood the interior with natural light, making you feel at one with the surrounding beauty paired with multiple terraces, an outdoor lounge and a dining area. Live the dream, make memories and indulge in the life you deserve. Contact us today to book your stay or to learn more about this exquisite property. Your oasis of opulence awaits.